This is Big Podcast. All right, how does this sound? I'm using RX11 on the post-production. I'm going to talk about that. This is Build a Big Podcast, the marketing podcast for podcasters. If you want to grow your podcast audience, get more people to hear your message, get more people to spread your message, make more money with your message, make a podcast that matters and that people miss if you don't release an episode. How awful is that? This is the podcast for you. I'm going to help you do those things and more. This is the audio edition of my weekly newsletter. That is called Big Podcast Insider. This is issue 181. And for all the links and more information, newsletter.bigpodcast.com. Here's what we're going to cover. Do you need to upgrade? Can you write 12 books in 12 months? The Five Finger Trigger. A model for viral content. Ted's 10 Rules of Public Speaking. Not that Ted. (laughs) Different guy, but still important. Also, some classified ads, things that will help you to grow your podcast, get more people to your show, the things that this podcast is about. This episode of Build a Big Podcast is brought to you by Riverside.fm, a virtual studio that makes recording and editing at the highest quality possible, accessible to anyone. One of the things I'm talking about on this episode is upgrading. Well, you don't have to do that with Riverside. It's web-based. You're upgraded to the latest edition every single time you load it up, and it's just that easy. You go to Riverside.fm, your virtual studio is there waiting for you. Not only is it easy for you, It's easy for your guest. Give your guest a link. They open it up in a Chrome browser. Boom, you are there in the Riverside studio. You sound good. You look good. You're recording high quality content with ease. And after that, instant transcriptions, social media clips, everything you can ever want to record, publish, market your podcast. It's at riverside.fm. I want you to try it for free. This is how to do it. Go to riverside.fm, sign up for an account. They're going to give you a couple of hours. Use that couple of hours to look under the hood, kick the tires, see how you like it, get an interview or two. Use it. Does it work for you? If you want to stick around, this is the discount code. Big Podcast, B-I-G-P-O-D-C-A-S-T. That's going to get you 15% off. URL, riverside.fm. Get your free account. If you want to stick around, you get 15% off with the code. Big Podcast, B-I-G-P-O-D-C-A-S-T. We're going to get into it, man. I'm going to go from thing to thing to thing. All of these things about podcasting. And when I switch from thing to thing to thing, you're going to hear the sound. That's how you know. If you want more information, go to newsletter.bigpodcast.com. Again, this is issue number 181. The links to everything that I'm talking about, more details. You will find it there. While you are there, sign up. You'll get the email edition. It comes out every Friday morning, New York City time. You ready to get into it? Here we go. Do you need to upgrade? How often have you asked yourself this? Maybe not enough. Some of you guys upgrade for everything. Apple released an iPhone. Then a new model comes out a couple months later. Oh, man, I got to upgrade. Do you really? Let's talk about it. As I mentioned, RX-11 was just released. Do I sound different than the last episode of Build a Big Podcast? If you want to compare podcast.bigpodcast.com. Now, Isotope, the company that makes RX, they've got what they call a loyalty discount. I've been with RX for several years, 9, 10, 11. I've been with them for a minute. They've got the Elements version of RX, the Standard version of RX, and the Advanced version of RX. Previously... That last episode, that was with RX-10 Advanced. That's what I've been using for a long, long time. The version that I used on this podcast, RX-11 Standard. And the reason that I did that, they've got something called Dialogue Isolate. Used to be advanced, now it's standard. That's really all I needed the advanced version for. So I saved myself some bucks. $99 for the upgrade. It's not a bad deal. Let's look at the flip side of that. Something I haven't upgraded for a long time. I was recommending the Kensington Expert Mouse to a client this week. I realized that I'd had the one that I'm using right now since 2010. Still going strong. Why replace it? If you don't know this mouse, silver and black, a huge trackball. Looks like Centipede from back in the day. (laughs) A lot of audio editors use it. Four buttons, scroll wheel, trackball. That's what it is. I thought, man, how great is it that you can buy something all this disposable stuff that we're coming out with, you keep it, I don't know, a year or two maybe for your electronic stuff, and you buy something related to audio creation like the Kensington Expert Mouse, 10 plus years, still going strong, amazing. One of the reasons I wanted to bring this topic up is because I think it's fun to buy things. It's really fun to try new technology available to us. You might be playing with AI, AI jingles, AI voiceovers, AI editing. It's made editing a lot easier than it used to be. However, Sometimes the best choice is to appreciate and make the most out of what we already have. Some of the most talented podcasters that I have seen are the ones that work within a budget. They've got a very tight frame. 
And that causes them to get creative. In fact, knowing this, when I set up my home podcasting studio, and this was, you know, 2014, you know, I had all this radio stuff because I was working in radio and I thought, okay, I'll do an RE20. And I get the fancy compressors, the rack gear, the interface. And then I thought, no, 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 no. You know what? I'm going to do the opposite of that. I'm going to set a really tight budget like an average podcaster might have. And I'm going to see what I can do on, let's say it was $500. I don't remember how much I put into it. Maybe a little more than that. There was a mixer involved. You know, technology has changed since then. (laughs) One of the big pieces of your setup, the microphone that you use, instead of the RE20, which is about a $500, 550 microphone at this point, I used an ATR2100 by Audio-Technica. I think at the time it was 50 bucks. I've still got that microphone. It's still going strong. I'm not using it. Ironically, I'm using the RE20 right now. 500 something dollar microphone. And that's fine. I'm not saying to not get great equipment. Get great equipment. If it's going to make you feel good about your podcast, if you know you're going to use it, and I use this thing every day, get it, use it. This mic has not been changed in 50 years. It's not going anywhere. Yeah, there's other mics that are maybe more advanced, but the sound of radio, that is the sound of this mic. The Shure SM7B, the same way. Some gear is going to be here to stay. Even with new technology, AI, these fancy mics to do auto gain, they let you know when you're off access. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all great. But we're not going to see a big change in some of the equipment that we use. Expert Mouse is one of them. RE20 is one of them. If you're going into this knowing you're going to stick it out, it's a pretty good investment. I don't want disposable equipment. I want something that's going to work. Now, that might be a little bit different than upgrading as far as software, but maybe it's upgrading your equipment. And I wanted to bring it up to say that, no, you don't need to upgrade. You can do a lot with the equipment that you've got. It's going to cause you to get creative. You might actually have a better podcast because you don't upgrade. But if you know that there's a piece of technology that's going to last you for a while, great cables, for example, a great boom stand that isn't going to fall down in the middle of an episode. That's what happens with the cheap boom stands. The springs, boom, they fail on you. You buy two or three cheap ones, it's going to end up costing you more than a good one that you could have kept. I'm all for buying good stuff. I'm all for upgrading when you need to. Just be skillful about it. Think about it. If you've upgraded or you're thinking about it, let me know your thoughts. I'm on Mastodon, Blue Sky, or Threads. Newsletter.bigpodcast.com has those links. Have you upgraded RX-11? I'm curious about that. What do you think about it? Let me know. Mastodon, Blue Sky, or Threads. All the links to connect with me. Newsletter.bigpodcast.com. Big Podcast AMP. If you like the newsletter, you like the podcast, you're going to love Big Podcast AMP. It stands for Audio Monetization Program. It's a personal coaching program, and it's going to help you do three things. One, grow your podcast. Two, get people talking about your podcast. Three, make more money with your podcast. You can get details at bigpodcast.com slash amp. Go there. Read the letter. If you've got any questions, do reach out to me. I told you where to get the links. Newsletter.bigpodcast.com. Can you write 12 books in 12 months? The answer is yes. Will any of the books that you write be significant? Probably not. Womp, womp. Where's my sound effect? All right, there we go. Regardless, I've got a plan here. 12 books in 12 months. It's worth a look. I've got it linked at newsletter.bigpodcast.com. If you're looking for content for your podcast, that will also work for you. For example, taking an overall topic for each month, dividing that into five to 10 smaller elements, each of which would be an episode. I want you to take a look at this. It's at newsletter.bigpodcast.com. The issue is 181. It's certainly going to get you thinking about different ways to approach what you're already talking about. You got to be organized when you're writing a book. I know. As far as 12 books in 12 months, no way. The current book that I'm working on, I was supposed to release it 18 months ago. So I'm already well over 12 months. (laughs) It's a long book, man. I think to do something significant, it takes a while. In fact, in the next issue of this newsletter, I'm talking about that. I'm talking about a guy who's a Marvel animator. He can spend an entire month working on three minutes of material. Great work takes a while. But you know, when I talk about the Marvel Universe or Marvel Comics or those movies, you've seen them or you've at least heard of them. They make impact. Good work can take time. That's not to say that quick work can't have impact, but you've got to plan this thing out anyway. The whole plan, newsletter.bigpodcast.com. Reach out to me if you're doing something like this. I would love to hear more about it. The Five Finger Trigger. I love this concept for people who are starting a new podcast. If you're doing that, listen up. You might question yourself. Will your idea work? Will anybody care? Should you actually start? 
Those are questions that I ask myself all the time. According to the five finger trigger, you start once you find five people who are really interested, not lukewarm, maybe doesn't count. You need an emphatic yes. Yes, man, why are you not starting that? Let me give you my credit card now. Those kind of emphatic yeses. You get your five people and you start building. With that said, I want to add this thought. Sometimes people try to be helpful. Oh, that's a great idea. They're going to say yes to anything. And sometimes we need friends like that. Get in a bad situation, like, mm, yeah, maybe I shouldn't do this. No, oh, man, do it. Sounds great. Those are the friends that you have the most fun with sometimes. You're getting to the most trouble. <laughs> that can also be destructive, though. You want people that you trust, not your mother. If you hang out with too many yes men, you're going to make bad decisions. And you're going to be limited because you're going to think you're doing well. But your actual actions, your output is not going to reflect that. I see this all the time. My radio show, Music Business Radio, we work with arguably celebrities. These are people that are famous. They're rich. They've got a lot of people on the payroll. And sometimes you'll see them. They'll come up with an idea. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, the room changes when these people come in the room. You as a podcaster may have that effect on people. And that can be disappointing when you find out those people, you know, they really weren't into it, but they were afraid of getting fired or they wouldn't be able to hang out with you. So just be aware of it. Find five people you trust. Overall, I love the five finger trigger. I've got more information about it linked at newsletter.bigpodcast.com. A model for viral content. Is there a formula for viral content? That's the question. A lot of people promise this, but they leave out a key ingredient. I'm going to call that luck and algorithms. <laughs> eh, maybe one and a half ingredients, two ingredients. Here are three things to start with that will help you take advantage of luck and algorithms when they come your way. One, grab attention and make a promise. Two, deliver on that promise and trigger emotions. You want to make people feel something. What are they going to get when they do whatever it is that you're offering? People don't want to just lose 10 pounds. Yeah, that's, that's fine. They want to lose 10 pounds because how it makes them feel. Now, maybe that's health. Maybe it's people looking at them and saying, hey, man, you look great. But it's not just the 10 pounds. You got to get into the emotion of what that 10 pounds will give you. So whatever your 10 pounds is, connect the emotion to it. The third thing, make the message last. Inspire sharing. That's what makes something go viral. You and I can spend all the money in the world advertising. That's not sustainable. In fact, if you advertise something that's not very good, that thing is quicker to die. Let's go back to movies. Marvel Universe. Doesn't matter. If you've got a movie that isn't very good, once it hits the theaters and people start talking about it, it sucks. Miss it, man. Once that gets out there, all the advertising in the world is not going to keep up with people talking. But people talking, if you've got something good, that's going to work in your advantage. And then those people talking, that's when the algorithms kick in. So many people like this, we think you're going to like this. There's three things again. One, grab attention and make a promise. Two, deliver on the promise, trigger emotions. Three, make the message last, inspire sharing. There's not a guaranteed formula for viral success, but focusing on these three principles, that will significantly improve your chances of creating content that resonates and spreads. You want this in writing? Newsletter.bigpodcast.com, issue number 181. Ted's 10 Rules of Public Speaking. I love these rules. This is not TED as in TED Talks, by the way. Regardless, these are going to work great for your podcast with some modification. Let me give you the rules real quick. One, the podium is death. Two, invade the audience's space. Three, embrace spontaneity, even or maybe especially when it seems risky. Four, remember that the audience always wants you to succeed. Five, don't be afraid of humor. Six, you really don't need slides, and if you insist on using them, then you must deal with the consequences. Seven, tap into your own craziness. Eight, don't be shy about giving your roadmap to the audience. Nine, pay attention to other speakers and steal their best techniques. Ten, be a rock star and savor the moment. Let's dig into this a bit. Embrace spontaneity, even or especially when it seems risky. That's item number three. 
Spontaneity is essential for a great podcast. We've seen a lot of podcasts where somebody will basically read a script or go down pre-planned questions. I'm going to ask this, then I'm going to ask this, then I'm going to ask this. That works to a point as far as getting you through. I know when I started in radio on this long form show, 54 minutes of content, I was worried about it. So I was planning things out. The problem with planning things out is that if somebody says something interesting, you're worried about the next thing you've got on your list. You don't trust yourself to get off that list and get back on that list. If I said something like, yeah, you know, I uh, was in Mexico. I was crossing the border into the United States. They pulled out a drug sniffing dog. And at that moment, I realized that somebody had put drugs in my car. If I said that, I don't want you to go to the next question. What's your favorite success quote? (laughs) No, you're going to lose the audience because they want to know. Don't you want to know? You probably weren't paying attention. That's how you missed it. Or you were scared. So I love that. Three, embrace spontaneity, even or especially when it seems risky. Related to that, I've had some situations lately where I think, should I ask that? Yeah, I'm going to. Most of the time they work out, a couple times I've had pushback. It's a risk, but it's worth it for the times when it works out. I'm not trying to insult somebody. I'm not trying to embarrass somebody. But if listeners are thinking it and I'm thinking it, I'm going to ask it. Otherwise, you've got that next on the list. You just missed an opportunity. Don't be afraid to do that. Trust yourself that you're going to get back on the list. If there is a list, if there's not a list, trust yourself that you're going to get back on point and be able to land that plane. By the way, this is related to what he has at number six. He said, you really don't need slides. And if you insist on using them, you must deal with the consequences. That's the consequence. You get off topic. Next slide, please. Boom. If you want to go off topic and that's interesting, you're able to do that. That next slide, whoop, that pulls you right back into that thing that might not be working for you now in the moment. It works for you in planning, just like you planning out all those questions. But like Mike Tyson says, everybody's got to plan until they get punched in the face. You've got to trust your flexibility, your ability to get back on track if you get off track your ability to know what's coming next and your ability to land the plane. You can find the whole list of these at newsletter.bigpodcast.com. I want to hit one more before we go. Don't be afraid of humor. I was just talking to my radio producer this week. I was talking to him about our editor, Stephanie, and how much I rely on her when something goes wrong. There'll be sometimes when I take a risk, maybe it's getting off topic, but in this case, humor. I'll attempt to make a joke. Maybe it goes over, maybe it doesn't. If it doesn't, I want her to cut it. I'll give you an example of this. I was doing an interview and this guy was really thoughtful. We're talking about the music industry and he was saying today, if you're a singer on stage and he said something to the effect of he, or if you're a guy on stage and then he made the point and says, or if you're female trying to be inclusive and I made a joke, I said, yeah, or anything it's 2024 now, (laughs) you know, But it kind of came across like that, right? A little awkward, or maybe I was trying to correct him, or who knows, who knows? But I never want to be that guy who seems curmudgeonly, we're out of touch, or I'm not with what's going on now. I was trying to be inclusive. I went out on a limb, maybe it didn't work. So I said, hey, just drop my part out. What he says is fine. We know what he meant. I made it worse, probably took away from his message. That's the beauty of editing. And that gets back to the point I was trying to make earlier that when you get off topic, you trust yourself to reel it back in. You're going to get better at this the more episodes that you do. It's never perfect, but you can work it out most of the time. Do try. I've got these three rules that I talked about and seven more. The 10 rules of public speaking, all linked at newsletter.bigpodcast.com, issue number 181. Classified ads for you, things will help you to grow your podcast, get more people to your podcast, spread your message, make more money. Pod page. Join over 25,000 podcasters and automatically create a beautiful listener-friendly podcast site from your RSS feed. It's the simplest way to create a podcast website. They are beautiful. They work great. SEO enabled. You're going to get a lot more traction from Google and from people searching for your topic with a site like PodPage. You can try it for free. I've got all the links. Newsletter.bigpodcast.com. The $100 Podcast Studio from Focusrite. Yes, you heard me right. $100. I talked at the very beginning of this episode about recording on a budget. This is a way to have great equipment and still keep it on a tight budget. $100 is going to get you the Vocaster One audio interface, 
a Vocaster DM1 mic, the Focusrite HP 60V studio headphones, and also all the cables that you need. I love Focusrite. I'm using a Scarlett 4i4 interface right now. This is one of my top three audio brands. I love Electro Voice, the mic that I'm using. I love Focusrite, and I love Zoom as a portable recorder to have a backup recording of everything that I'm speaking into this microphone going through that Focusrite. This $100 deal, it is perfect for a solo podcaster or somebody doing only remote interviews. You're using Riverside.fm, for example. This is all you need. $100 gets it to your door. I've got a full review, links for you to get this deal at newsletter.bigpodcast.com, issue number 181. Thank you for listening to Build a Big Podcast. When you are ready, this is what I've got for you. Big Podcast Extra. These are short emails to help you build an audience, attract clients, and make money via podcasting. This is free. I've got the link for you to get these at newsletter.bigpodcast.com. Also, the Podcast Growth Toolkit. I call this the Swiss Army Knife of Podcasting. These are forms. These are templates. These are things that you can use to do what you're doing now, but get more listeners to those things. It's old school. Grab them by the wallet marketing. If you want to make more money with your podcast, the Podcast Growth Toolkit will help you. It is free. Newsletter.bigpodcast.com. Now, if you've got a little bit of money, I've already talked about the audio monetization program. I call it Big Podcast Amp for short. This is personalized coaching for indie podcasters to help you grow your podcast audience, build your authority, brand, and reputation. It is a great bargain for personal podcast coaching with me. I've got everything linked at newsletter.bigpodcast.com. I've got a long letter that explains how it works. Read it all. If you've got questions, let me know. Here's how to do it. Bigpodcast.com slash subscribe. I make it easy on you. One click is all it takes for you to get every episode downloaded to your iPhone, your Android device, however you listen to your podcast. At bigpodcast.com slash subscribe, I've got three buttons. You only need one. One for Android, one for iPhone, one if you want the RSS feed. Pick one, click it. You'll get every single episode of Build a Big Podcast delivered to wherever you want it to, your Android device, your iPhone, your computer. From the Big Podcast supercomputer straight into your ears, Advice to help you grow your podcast audience, get more people to your shows, make more money with your podcast. Make it easy on yourself. Never miss an episode by going to bigpodcast.com slash subscribe. Pick one of those three buttons, iPhone, Android, or an RSS feed. Do it now before you forget, bigpodcast.com slash subscribe. And I'll see you on the next episode of Build a Big Podcast.